Hi and welcome to Hidden Gems, the series where we discuss about good video games that few people know. In this first episode we're gonna talk about Overland, a game made by the indie company Finji. This is a turn-based survival strategy game and in this video you will understand why the developers did a really good job at combining these three genres. So without further ado, let's start. That was the introduction of Overland, and to be honest, there's not much to say about the lore. As you just saw, it seems that an asteroid fell on Earth, and because of that, our planet is now populated with hostile alien life. And for some reason that will become only partially clear once you finish the game, you're in the eastern region of the US and you have to cross the entire country. The lore in this game is definitely a bit too simple, but I will talk about this issue more in detail later. So once you complete a short tutorial, you find yourself with a car, two survivors and a map with different locations. And here you can plan your strategy. If you're running out of fuel, you probably want to travel to a location where you can grab some, or instead you can decide to go to places where you can find new survivors or better equipment. One thing you can't avoid is the roadblock, the final level of an area that once completed gets you to the next one. So when you travel to a location, we come to the actual gameplay core. The part where you can lose hours of progress and die miserably. Let's start talking about the turn-based part. Every survivor has 3 action points per turn, 2 in hard difficulty that can be spent for walking, searching loot in cars or bins, attacking aliens and interacting with vehicles. A survivor has only one action point if they're injured and die if they take another hit. The aspect that I really appreciate about this turn-based game is that there is no RNG in combat, so your attacks and enemies' attacks are always successful and deal the same damage every time. There is no RNG in enemies' behavior as well, since they always spend their action points to move towards the closest survivor and of course attack them if they are in range. This is actually quite important because mistakes in this game are really punishing and can lead to a game over, so you definitely don't want any RNG factor because that could make the game unfair for the player. Now the interesting part comes here. So in a normal turn-based game like XCOM or Mutant Hero Zero, you usually have to try to defeat all the enemies in order to win. Well, if you try to do this in Overland, you will die every single time, for the simple reason that when you kill a monster, another one or more than one spawn. Remember, this is a survival game, so the only strategy that works here is to grab as many supplies as you can, kill enemies only if necessary, and then get the F out, because things can get only worse from there. Also because some monsters leave their remains when they die, sometimes blocking your escape route, which usually means GG. And you must not be too greedy as well, otherwise you reach a point where it becomes really difficult to find a way out. So that's pretty much it for the core, the main loop of the game. However, if Overland is a hidden gem, it's also because of the polishing, or the outer core, I don't really know how to call it, in short, are the things that make this game immersive, not repetitive and replayable. Let's start from the immersion. In my opinion, there are three things that give immersion to a video game, the story, the graphics and the audio. As I said before, the lore in this game is pretty simple and doesn't really give any immersion at all. However, I think the artists of this game did a really good job and I would say the audio is what really makes the difference here. The environment sounds are on point and I really like the fact that the music becomes more intense as more enemies spawn. 
A good immersion, however, may not be enough to make a game good if the gameplay is repetitive. And one of the best ways to avoid that is by adding variety, something that this game definitely has. You start with basic weapons like stones and sticks, basic enemies and basic survivors, and when you reach new areas, you find new items, new car upgrades, new survivor abilities, and new enemies. This means that if you play this game for the first time, you don't get bored, but you're forced to constantly find new strategies, like killing an explosive enemy that stuns all the other ones, or make an enemy teleport on another one so they both die. Variety also allows you to choose between different playstyles. For example, you can have a truck that lets you carry only two survivors or a van that carries up to five survivors to make things easier. As for weapons, you can choose to have an axe that does one damage and never breaks, a knife that one shots every enemy but has limited durability, or a stick that breaks after two hits but can be used as a torch, really useful during the night. Variety also has an important role when we talk about the replayability of this game. The random generation of maps, locations and survivors makes every run unique, but if that's not enough, well, there are still a lot of achievements for you to complete. And in the end, let's talk about something that few video games have. Karma, because yes, in this game, some choices you make have consequences. For example, there are some places you can trade, and if you kill all traders, you can take all their loot for free, but then all the other traders you encounter in the future will refuse to trade with you. And another thing is that if you leave a survivor behind, he's gonna be really pissed, and he can actually spawn randomly in a level and fight you. Really cool. Despite being good, this game is known by few people, and there are surprisingly many negative reviews on Steam. So let's talk now about what in my opinion can be improved. Well, let's start from the negative reviews, the majority of them basically say the game is too hard. And yeah, dying after hours and hours of progress is surely frustrating, I can tell that because it happened to me, also because being a roguelike you lose everything and you have to start over. But I think many people miss the point that, as I said before, if you play Overland like every other turn-based game, you'll die every time. Now I figure out the right strategy to beat this game by myself, but since there are so many people that apparently didn't, I think it would be cool to add some tips that guide a player towards the right direction, maybe during loading screens or when you die. Now another thing that would make this game better is some more detailed lore. As I said before, all we know is that an asteroid fell on Earth and there are weird creatures all around. It would be interesting to know how humans reacted to that and most importantly, why the final level of the game is like that. I don't really want to give any spoilers here, but I think it would be interesting to maybe add some collectibles like newspapers or diaries that give some sort of insight on what happened. I think having a better lore would attract more people to the game and also make the trailer more interesting, because right now it just shows some random gameplay scenes. So these are the two main issues this game has in my opinion. Other two minor changes I would do to this game are 1. I think the medkit is too OP, this thing gives infinite heals and it would be better if you gave only a limited amount of heals. And two, about the traders karma I said before, it would be better if the traders actually attacked you right away instead of saying like, we don't want to trade with you, because you can still kill them and take all the loot for free. So that was it for this first episode of Hidden Gems. Leave a comment down below if you want to give me any feedback about this video and yeah, I'll see you in the next episode.